my tips. Hello and welcome to another Tech Bite Tips video. In today's video, we're going to be addressing another video request that we have received. This video request is from Christian Castillo 3043. And this request is basically about an application that is a game manager named ROM M. And he requests that I can do a video of how to set this up. So we're going to get to that in this video. So let's get to that. The first thing I want to do is I want to go to their GitHub really quickly. So we can find it in github.com slash rom map with two p's slash rom m and that is the self-hosted rom manager for retro games and if we go down here we can see that this application has been released a lot of times it's currently on version 351 so that's pretty good 60 releases almost and they have 31 contributors to this application so even though it's kind of a small community it's a looks like it's an active community they're releasing it pretty often and it seems to be pretty stable this application is mainly written in Python and Vue and TypeScript and Shell so there's a little bit of everything in there and if we see here it says that it's a self-hosted ROM manager and the name is ROM M so ROM manager and here we go into the GitHub repository and it tells us that it allows you to scan, enrich, and browse your game collection, and it gives you a clean and responsive user interface. And it, it supports multiple platforms, many ways to name the things, a way to tag your games, and it allows you also to even play the games using Emulator JS on your browser, so that's great. And it has several backends where you can pull the data for your games. So they have the IGDB and Moby Games. There's another one also that is not listed here. And it allows you to share your games with people through the web. And you can give them like limited access and set up permissions for them. So that's another good thing that you can do here. It has a bunch of different platforms so we can see them later. And it says that it, it is capable of detecting multi-file games and it can parse the tags of the games to identify what type of game it is and you can even like add games and update and delete the games directly from the browser so that's really nice it's good features it seems to work for mobile as well as desktop in the user interface it's an interface that is responsive so that's good and if we come down here it says that to install this we need to generate the api keys uh, for igdb or Moby games to fetch the metadata about the games and if you click there that's a guide that talks about that we'll cover that in a bit and then it tells that you need to uh, validate that your fold folder structure matches what is described down here there's two of them one is recommended and the other one is as a fallback so we're going to go with the recommended one and it says that then we create the docker compose file and then we execute it to set up the application so let's quickly cover this uh, the file structure we need to have is basically we need to have a folder that is library and then we're going to have the ROMs folder inside library and then inside the ROMs folder we're going to have the platform so for example Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, PlayStation, uh, etc. And then inside each platform it's where you put the ROMs for your games. If you need any BIOS for your platform then you need to create another top folder here that is going to be the BIOS folder and then you put the platform again as subfolders and then you put the binaries for those BIOSes there. So that's the structure that we're going to follow. I've already set it up so let me go quickly into my NAS here and we're going to go into the projects. I have my ROM manager folder where I'm going to put my Docker Compose file and if I go into the configs this is uh, the important thing. Um, actually no that's going to be in the media directory because I have all my ROMs in the media and then games. So here's my library folder. Then like I said, we have the ROMs or the BIOS folder. So if you need a BIOS, you put your BIOS here. And if you need the ROMs, then you put ROMs and then the platform. In my case, I'm just going to use Nintendo and Super Nintendo for this. You don't need any BIOS for these. So that's why I don't have any BIOS here. But then inside here, I have to put some games. That we can test with so i have the super mario brothers for nintendo and for super nintendo we have mario kart and mario world and that's the file structure that you need to have in 
where you're going to put your games right that's that's the main thing here but we're going to also need to create other structures here in the configs like we usually do so i create a folder for rom manager and in there here's the four folders that we're going to be needing according to their docker file the main here is the configuration where the application is going to store its configuration for assets it's going to store information related to the roms and resources it's going to store like images that it pulls about the different roms that we have and in redis data is for the redis cache for our system so that's the four folders that you need to have inside the configs directory and then we're going to be good when it comes to the folders now let's go back quickly into here and remember that it says that we need to create a api keys for it to be able to fetch the images and the data about the different roms that we put in the system so if we click here it's going to take us to this website uh, or this page in the wiki of the github and then it tells us that we have several options we can use igdb and in order for us to connect to igdb we need to have a twitch account inside that twitch account we're going to create an application integration with twitch and that's how we're going to retrieve a client ID and a client secret that we're going to be using to connect to the IGDB. You can always get a Twitch account for free. Then you go into your account, going into developer portal, which is uh, documented in here. And then you'll see this page that says register an application. So you click here on applications, create application, then you give it a name. The name has to be something unique. It's shared among all the people that are in Twitch. So let's say you put a name like ROM Manager. Somebody's al already going to have that. So you need to put a bigger name here, like your name, ROM Manager, or something like that. And then you put here that the OAuth URL is going to be HTTP colon slash slash localhost. And then for the category, you select application integration and you leave it as confidential and then you create it. Once you create it, you go back into applications and then you'll see your application created there and you click on manage and then you'll see your client ID there and then you can create a new secret and copy that because we're going to need those two for our Docker Compose file. So that's how you get the free integration to IGDB using your Twitch account. Now, you also have the option to use Moby Games, but the problem is that Moby Games lets you create an account for free but for you to use the api you need to pay for it so it's under a paywall if you want to use this maybe because you're using a platform that relies on this one and doesn't have the data in the other one then you need to pay i think it was five dollars a month or something like that they also have a steam grid database but i'm not gonna cover that one uh they have instructions here for you to do it that's basically gonna connect to your steam account to that but yeah i would say go to the igdb one and that's the easier one that you can use and then once you have those api keys and we have our folder structure that we have created for our roms and for our application data then we're going to go and look for the docker compose example file that they have but this is an important thing that i want to note here the way that this docker compose file is created assumes that you're going to be running this on your computer and it deploys two containers it deploys a rom manager container but it also deploys a mysql database container i have tried to get this mysql container running in synology dsm 7.2 but there's a glitch with dsm point uh, 7.2 where you cannot open a terminal into the container and you actually need to do that because by default the container is going to be locked down and you are not going to be accessible to log in from another container into that database and since you cannot really open a terminal to fix that problem right now i created a video the before this one that lets you know how you can create a MariaDB using package manager in the Synology NAS so that you can access that instance of MariaDB with any container without any problems. So I would say before you continue here, make sure that you have your MariaDB database running like I described it in the previous video. Now, given that we're gonna make changes to this Docker file to deploy this application. So we're gonna remove entirely all the database stuff. So we're just gonna have all the part about the ROM manager application. So as usual, let's go back to our NAS. Let's go into container Manage manager, go into project. I have already created the folder for ROM manager, if I'm not mistaken. Let me just check that. Yeah, ROM manager. 
is here in the configs but in the projects I also have it so that's perfect that means that I can just go here and then create a new project I'm gonna name it ROM manager and I'm gonna pick that path that I specified here for the project for ROM manager and then I'm gonna say use the existing docker compose file in this case because I have it but if you didn't have it then it's just gonna create it so here's gonna be our docker compose file I've already made changes so I'm gonna make sure that this is saved but I'm not gonna run it so we can see it better in the bigger view so now when we go into here we can click on run manager and go into the YAML and then we can see what I have here in my YAML file so in my YAML file I have determined that I'm gonna have one service which is the ROM manager container I'm gonna use the ROM map ROM image in docker hub and you, I'm gonna use the latest tag I'm gonna name this container ROM manager and I'm gonna say restart it unless I stop it on purpose myself and then in here I'm gonna define what's the user that is gonna have access to all those folders that I have in my NAS so I'm gonna define it using the user colon and then PUID and then colon PGID. Why? Because if I specified here on the environment variables, for some reason this application doesn't behave well. It is able to read stuff, but if you're trying to play the game from your browser, at that point for some reason it's not able to read the file and it's gonna error out. So this is the only way that it works. And now in there I'm gonna define environment variables, which is as usual my time zone, which is America, New York. But then in here, I'm gonna specify that the database host is the IP of my NAS, that I'm gonna be using port 3306 for my MariaDB database, and that I'm gonna use the database named ROMM with the user ROMM. This has not been created, so I'm gonna go over that after I explain this. And then this is gonna be the password that I'm going to set, let me say ROMM password for this user. You need to generate a secret key for the application. You can do that with this command in Linux or if you have git bash installed, for example, in your computer, you execute this in git bash and it's gonna give you a random set of numbers and then you can just paste that in here. It can be anything, it just has to follow that format. And then in here, you would have to put the IGDB client ID, which is the application registration that you created on Twitch, and then the secret that you also created on the Twitch website for that application registration. If you decided to go with Moby Games, then you uncomment this option here, and then you put the value here. And if you decided to go with Steam Grid DB also, you can put it here too. But I did not, so I'm just gonna go with this one. And then we're gonna mount all those volumes that I said that we created. We have in the configs directory, the ROM manager uh, resources, the Redis data, assets, and the config. And we also have the game library, which is in my media folder. So we're mounting all those from the container into the NAS so that it's safely stored in our NAS. And in my case, I'm gonna expose this application on port 8069 because I've already used 8070 and up. So we're going down and the container is listening on port 8080. So that's all that we need here for this YAML file, but we should not be running this yet because we have not set up the database yet. So we need to do that right now. So let's go into my SQL Workbench and in here we can click on that box that showed up after we set up the database in the previous video and then it'll take us to something like this, but you won't have anything in the query here. It's gonna be blank. But this is what we need to do. First of all, we don't have a database for ROM Manager, as you can see. So the first thing that we need to do here, also to check the users, we do not have a user for ROM Manager either. So that's cool. Let's close out of here. So the first thing we're gonna do is run this command here that tells my SQL Workbench to create a database named ROMM. So we click here, and it executes that and when we refresh here now we have a rom m database but it doesn't have anything and then we need to create a user that will have access to this database here so we run this other command create user rom at all identified and this is going to be the password for that user so my rom m password and 
one one uh, exclamation exclamation i decided to use something like that because it has to have at least 10 characters and be a little bit complicated for you to successfully create it so we're going to do this run this command it says that was successful so we can go here into server users and now we have rom m as a user and now even though we have a user this user doesn't have permissions to do anything yet so we're going to run this other command that tells grant all the privileges on the database rom m for everything to the user rom at everything so then we run this and it is running and it was successful so now our rom m user should also have all the permissions necessary to work on this new database that we created and then we flush the privileges to make sure that those permissions take effect if we go into the server users and then we select rom m and we go into the schema privileges we see that on the database rom mm it has everything so now it's able to manage this database and as we can see if i refresh the database has nothing so this database is going to be set up when we start our rom manager application we're going to see that in a second so let's go back into our nas and let's now build and that's going to create the container and the network and then we're gonna see what happens when this container is running all right we got the exit code we can go into the container here and go to the logs really quickly and then we'll see that it is slowly coming up but this is another important thing that I, I have to highlight here if we go into the database we're gonna refresh we still don't have a table but if we refresh here we'll see that eventually this container is going to start doing things and this process is slow it's pretty pretty slow so you have to give it time i would say like 10 15 minutes you can follow it on the logs you see it's connecting to the database it determined that it was a maria database that we have in the back end it connected redis to the database and now when we refresh a little bit later we'll see that it's running upgrades so it, it starts on 1.62 and if I go into the database and I refresh, then you can see that tables are being created. So it's doing stuff in the database to configure the database to have all that it needs for the application to run properly. And this is a process that I say that takes a long time. If you refresh here, you're gonna be seeing for a long time, like 10, 15 minutes, that it's gonna be upgrading, upgrading, upgrading. You see, it started with 162, now it's on 163. And it's saving stuff to the database and making changes and if you go back into the database and you refresh you're gonna see sometimes other new tables appearing and disappearing so you have to wait for a while until it's done doing all the upgrades because it's gonna be upgrading a lot like 1.8 something and then some other numbers and you should wait until you see a message here that says that it's ready and running you see now it's 171 to 18 so just be patient let it do its thing i'm gonna be back when that is done so you can see how it looks when that's complete oh while that is working let me point something out that i forgot to mention before when we go into the platforms uh section here when you click on folder structure i'm sorry not there supported platforms you will have a full list here that tells you all the different platforms that are supported here so the platform name is going to be on the left side on the right of that you have how you have to name that folder in your file structure and then on the right side it tells you which of the two providers that are recommended you can use to pull information about games from that platform so as you can see here for example let's go into the nintendo so here we go so nintendo entertainment system you can pull information about those games from both places from igdb and Moby games and it tells you that for that you need to create the folder named nes but if you notice there are specific platforms that are only available on one of them for example nintendo 64 dd it's only available through igdb so you can only pull information about those type of games from this but there are others that are only available on Moby games for example north star so North Star, you would only be able to pull information from Moby Games. So that's something that you need to know. If you're going to look for a platform, you have to check here if it is supported by the platform that you're using here uh, to pull the information. If not, then you're going to have to subscribe to the other or you know figure out how to get it. But there's a lot of platforms here that you can 
put into these application to play your games and stuff so it's you see it's a pretty big list and you can go into the supporter platform section and it's going to tell you what you can actually put in here to use this application so let's follow again on the NAS and see how we're doing we're upgrading from version 2.00 to another 009 model factor so now it's almost at the end of it so we still need to give it time it's been seven minutes so far so i'll be back when that is completed all right it is almost done it took about 20 minutes to set everything up and i want to highlight something here you see that all of this that is doing even though it says that it's coming from the standard error stream it's actually not errors this is just information that you're getting from the application and all of this is making upgrades and changes to the database to adjust to what it needs in order for the application to work so all of this that you see here is working on the database and now when we get to this point we're we're just getting information about it connecting and running and all that soon we should be getting that message that says that it's ready so let's give it a little bit more time and wait until that comes and here we go we see application startup complete and if we go into the logs you can even see that it already found the games that we had put in the folder structure so it found two platforms and the platforms are nintendo entertainment system and the super nintendo entertainment system so it already knows that there's some games related to that and then it just started the application so now we should be able to go into another tab into the ip of our nas colon 8069 all right so this is what you should see now that the application has loaded and then you have to create an administrator user so i'm going to put rom m and rom m as the password too and i'm going to click on next and then it says that it identified that i provided the credential for the igdb so that's perfect and i say finish once i say finish then it asked me to log in with that user that i just created so i put that in here and i log in and once i log in then i'm going to get the interface here in my case it says that i don't have the cover here but it did find that i had some games in my folders so to fix that what we can do is we can click down here and then we're going to select here to do a complete rescan and then we're going to press uh, click here where it says scan and that's going to scan all of the folders in our system for all of the games that we currently have in there and then it's going to pull all those images and data that it needs from the database igdb to then update our system so it looks properly so as you can see here it found super mario brothers super mario brothers 2 and all of this is for the nintendo entertainment system and then it said uh, street fighter but that shouldn't be that so i don't know why it did that and then for super nintendo entertainment system it found mario kart and super mario world and it's done scanning so we go back and then here we go we see what it should look like and then we can filter here do i want to see the super nintendo games only i click there if i want to see the nintendo then i click here and then it's going to filter out and show me that and the nice thing that i found about this application is first of all you have the option here to add new games so upload games from the browser to put it in your database and then you can store them there and another thing that i found cool is that you can actually play your games directly from the browser so in my case let's say for example super mario brothers for nintendo entertainment system i can click here where it says play button and then it tells me which emulator i want to use i'm going to leave it at the default i don't need to specify a bios for nintendo entertainment system so that's perfect and then i just click the play button here and you see that it loads the game and automatically we're here with the game and it's ready for us to use it so this is great and uh, right now I'm using my keyboard but as you can see I can play the game with my keyboard and uh, just pressing some keys I can always change that by going oh hold on, I'm gonna get killed by clicking here on the controller and then you have all the mappings that you have and uh, you can do all the things that you need so you can play the game but as you can see it works through the browser I can play my Nintendo games in the browser so let's close out of this one and let's go to a super nintendo game so you can see a difference so i'm going to go into the super mario kart i'm going to and i'm going to do the same thing press the play button press play and here we go it automatically loads and 
If I press escape, it minimizes that a little bit. And then in here, with my keyboard, I can do the thing so that I can play here. Let me pick my usual character that I love in this game. And let's start a race so you can see that it actually works. And as you can see here, we're playing in the browser the game that I have for Super Nintendo. So this is great. And I think you'll find it useful if you're like into retro games because it honestly is a great application to have. So let me X out of here. And that's how it is. You got it working. You have your ROM manager here and it was able to scan your library and you can play the games on the browser and everything's working good. The only workaround here that we had to do is we had to set up a database separate from the Docker Compose because it just didn't work properly like that with the Synology NAS, but it does work in the end. We managed to get it working. And if you want to keep your library and play your games on your browser for all the different retro platforms, here you go, you have the tool to do that. So if you like it, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you have not done so. It really helps us a lot. And share the videos to people that you think might find them useful. Uh, give me comments in the section below. All of these videos that I'm doing in the video requests are because people are putting comments of things that they would like to see featured in the channel. I try my best to bring you a video of getting working or at least discussing the benefits and pitfalls of the different applications and tools that you want me to cover. And also remember, you should not be seeing any ads on my videos. So I'm not monetizing this channel and I really would appreciate it if you go to the link in the description below and donate either via PayPal or through Bitcoin because that helps me focus on the channel and give it time uh, you know, dedicate time to the channel so you can have good quality content that you'll enjoy. So that's going to be it. I'll see you in the next one. Take care.